So as you can see, this is my uh, new COVID classroom. I hope you guys are staying safe and uh, everything's going all right at home. Today we're gonna go over just uh, some warm-up mobility. Normally when I do this practice uh, in the FRS system, this is just referred to as a morning routine. And to give you some context uh, and some safety precautions is good too. So morning routines for us, for those of you who don't know, um, typically are at a, a very low um, tension level. So what we're gonna be working on today is this is predominantly about getting your joints ready to move. This is great for pre-workout, pre-exercise, etc. But morning routines for me are a status check. When I get up to see how did I sleep? How am I moving? How's my body set? So I'm in a way exploring uh, at this time how each of my joints are moving and functioning. If I have anything that's uh, locking up or painful or problematic, then I pay special attention to that maybe, or I do some extra work on that. So um, we're gonna be going through all the joints of the body. Typically, once you get this routine down and you're comfortable with it, this typically doesn't take me more than 10 minutes. I just move from one to the next to the next, but today we're gonna take a little bit more time, uh, especially for those of you who are newer to introduce you to the process. Uh, I do have a full cars routine on the YouTube page. If you wanna go check that out, it's, I think it's an hour um, where I take you through a full, full cars explanation and a breakdown of tension, etc. So I'm just gonna give you the, the fundamental basics today so that we can get moving and I'm gonna take you through each step with a little bit of detail, hopefully. So um, first off, we're making circles, right? Joints are designed to move in different planes of motion and we're gonna be making the largest circles that we can through those ranges of motion. And the purpose of that, of course, is to be able to use it and not lose it. So for some of us through exercise, injury, et cetera, over time. I can't be with you and you're not here, so your joints might not perform exactly the way you'd like them to. What I want you to pay special attention to, for us, we have what we would call an opening, an opening angle and a closing angle position. So what that means is for, for any given joint that I'm moving, right, I have a side of that joint which is opening and getting larger, and I have a side of that joint which is compressing and getting smaller. So for us, if I open my joint, if I'm, if I'm rotating my neck and this stuff, the opening side gets uncomfortable, that's definitely a story about your body, but typically, you know, maybe, maybe you slept on your pillow wrong, uh, your body's a little bit uncomfortable, but that's, maybe it's a prior injury, but that's not typically something we get too concerned about if the closing angle side is pinching. So that's what we call closing angle joint pain. That's a red flag scenario. Now, without doing assessment, I don't know what's going on with your body, so we need to kind of take a step back from that. So what I'm gonna ask you to do is if, for example, I'm moving my neck or I'm moving my shoulder through any range of motion, okay? And shoulders are pretty typical. Clicking, ticking, cracking, that's a common thing, so don't freak out about that. But if I get to a position where this is the opening angle, right? The angle is getting larger and opening. This is the closing angle behind, which is getting smaller. If my closing angle starts to cause me pain, I'm gonna ask that you not just use your power and grind through that. Instead, I'm gonna ask you to stop and then instead change your angle of movement, go around that pain position and then try to go back into increasing the largest circular path with control you can maintain, okay? So back to our circles, really we're just avoiding red flag scenarios. And again, I can't see you, I'm not with you. And even in a kin stretch class, for example, where we're using this, this material as a warm up, and then we're transitioning into full movement practice for mobility. Um, I see the light is changing. So sorry, guys, I hope you can still see okay. Um, <clears throat> When you're doing your circles, again, we wanna to try to make the largest circle we can. So I don't wanna haphazardly just kind of circle my arm. What I'm gonna be doing is trying to find out what is the maximum range of motion that that arm can move through, that joint that I can control. So in order to do that, we're gonna be using some tension throughout the body. So a quick little primer on this. If you grab your own hands, right? Put your hands together. And then what I want you to do is I want you to try to shut off all of the tension or power in the forearm, the upper arm, just leave that alone. And I only want you to use the fingers in your hand. So grab your hands and then just try to squeeze as hard as you can with only your hands, only your fingers. 
squeeze and release. Okay, now what I want you to do, that would be a level one, let's say. Now for the second one, I want you to do the same concept, but I want you to use your forearms and your biceps. So you're gonna use your hands, forearms, and biceps. Level two squeeze, ready? Squeeze, biceps, forearms, harder, and release. Okay, you should feel a slight tension increase on that. Now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna have you, I don't know what position you're in, but I want you to squeeze your butt if you're able. Pack the air down into your abdomen, so make your abs tight, brace your core there. Start to increase tension through your arms all the way down, and now squeeze with your whole body. Squeeze and release. Okay, you feel the change in tension? This would be what we would call, let's say, a level three handshake. So, uh, and this goes kudos to my coach, Hunter, Hunter Fitness. He's, he's uh, one of the FRS masters, so Hunter, I'm stealing from you. Actually, it's not technically stealing if it's been taught. So anyway, this is uh, how we step in. So what I'm looking for is this gives me a scale of what kind of pressure and tension I'm using. Overall, what I wanna try to do is I wanna slowly and moderately use tension throughout my body. So you're gonna hear me cue you on tension in different places so that my body becomes immobile. So in other words, I don't want my body to be turning and incorporating other elements of my structure to work on a singular joint. I wanna isolate that. So often I'll talk about as if I, I literally make the entire body encased in concrete, but the only thing that's free is this shoulder joint to move. If I'm in concrete, I'm not gonna break through that concrete and start turning my body. The only thing that's gonna be able to move is my shoulder through that space. So in order for us to control that, we create some tension or counter contention uh, tension or co-contracted tension in the body in order to be able to, to keep the body still. And that also helps to boost some muscular force, which gets applied to the joint. Okay, so enough uh, dialogue on there that gave us about uh, six, seven minutes of intro. So hopefully you're, you're ready to go. Um, I'm gonna slide back here. So hopefully you can see just a little bit better. <clears throat> We're gonna start off in this high kneeling position, which is the one I was in here. So nice and vertical on the body line. No soaking butt, just nice and tall, push the hip points forward. I'm gonna cue you on your tail and your abdomen a bit. And one more thing, when I'm talking about percentages today, so um, we use the term MVC, which is maximum voluntary contraction. That means what you choose to contract. If you have a scale of one to 10 or 0% to 100%, I'm gonna call out different tensions for you. So let's say 10, 15, 20% is gonna be very, very low. That's just 10% mechanical force to rotate through that plane of movement. If I ask you to bump to 20, 30 or 40%, I'm asking you to increase the tension throughout the whole body, but then also increase the tension within that joint, that capsule that we're working on specifically. Okay, so the the percentages I'm asking of you are 100% would be my maximum force, like that level three contraction for the squeeze. And then of course we would cascade down from there throughout the body and specifically within the joint. Okay, so we're gonna start with the neck in high kneeling position. Here's what I'm gonna ask you to do. I'm gonna have you brace your frame. I'll call you on cues for that. Then I'm gonna slowly draw the chin in and down toward the chest. I'm gonna to try to touch the chest as best I can. Then I'm gonna slowly drag as if tracing a line across my clavicle or my chest with my chin all the way up and try and touch that left shoulder seam to the shirt. Then I'm gonna slowly start to extend my neck back. I'm gonna rotate the chin to the right side Touch that clavicle again, draw through the chest and continue. And we're gonna do both sides of that, okay? So nice and tall kneeling. If your knees hurt and you can't do tall kneeling, that's okay, go ahead and do standing. I'm gonna have you put your hands down at your side, make some fists, start to squeeze that. Right, pack some air down into your abdomen. We're gonna do about 20%, 10 to 20%. So take it a little bit easy. Remember, this is exploration. So 10 to 20% on my glutes, my butt, 10 to 20% of my abs, squeeze those hands just a bit, slowly draw that chin in, down towards the chest, far as you can, and then slowly towards the left. We wanna move about one mile an hour to that left shoulder seam, extend back behind you, chin rolls over to the right shoulder seam, and continue down across the chest. Now we're gonna bump up to 30%. So as long as that road is clear, 
Let's go for a little bit more tension. Continue to pass through. Now we're gonna bump up to 30 to 40%. Little bit more, remember to increase that tension with your hands and your butt and your abdomen to center and reverse. Right side now, chin to right shoulder. Extending back, chin to left shoulder. Try to continue contacting that chest and clavicle. Right shoulder, extend, left shoulder. Draw through, try to increase the size of the circle with each repetition. You should be at about 40% MVC now. Back to center and relax. Good. Cervical was first. Now we're going to go into upper thoracic. So we have segments of the spine, remember? We have a lower lumbar section and we have an upper section. So what we're going to work on right now is the upper section, which doesn't get a whole lot of love. We use this a fair amount. We don't use this much. So, <coughs> excuse me, what we're going to do first is we're going to cross the arms over. You can grab the shoulders or the clavicle. I'm going to ask you to stand up nice and tall on the knees and then I'm going to have you draw the chin in and down and you're going to roll the spine forward. Now pay close attention to this one, okay, because this gets sloppy pretty fast. Even though we're not using a lot of tension, I want to draw the chin in and down, roll forward. But once this portion of the spine reaches its final end point, I am not then going to hinge at the waist. So this is an important point. I'm working the upper section of the back, not the lower section. So the upper section is going to begin to curve and roll, and then you're going to find a period, a point where the spine doesn't want to go anymore. So you're either going to need to hinge or stop, meaning that's the maximum amount of forward flexion I can get with that spine. That's good. Then we're going to start to twist. So once I roll forward into that position, I'm going to twist to the left. Important cue here. The one point I want you to pay attention to is the hip. So if you touch that point on your hip or touch both points on your hips, what I want you to think about is when we start to turn, these hips are gonna wanna turn. It's gonna wanna move with you. This isn't a bad thing, it's just the body trying to give you what you're asking for, which is to rotate. But part of our skill through this practice daily is to build up afferent communication between the mind and the body. That means we have to know where the body's at in space and we have to regulate and use just what we wanna use, not the whole system, right? That's the goal, one of the goals. So what I want you to do is pay attention to those hip points. When I start to rotate, I want you to think about pushing that hip point forward towards you or rather away from you as my shoulder goes left. If I don't do that, that hip is gonna to wanna to trail and follow and we wanna avoid that. Same thing when I go to the right side and I'm turning. Think about that right hip point driving forward or at least staying vertical in place and don't allow that hip to trail as best you can. All right, here we go. So both hands are gonna cross over. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna squeeze these elbows down towards my chest while I hold the shoulder. This helps to give me a little bit of tension throughout the body. If that's uncomfortable, you can relax the arms a bit and just squeeze in towards your chest. So from here, once again, we're starting off at about 10 to 20%, nice and easy. Squeeze those elbows down, draw that chin in, slowly roll forward as far as you can. Twisting to the left as far as you can. Watch that left hip. Bending now to the left, try to touch that left shoulder to the floor. Once I reach maximum, I'm gonna extend back. As I go back, push those knees into the ground Reach as far as you can back into extension. Rotate to the right shoulder towards the ground. Slowly roll forward into flexion. And again, twisting left, bending left. A little bit more tension through the whole body here, 30 to 40%. Extend back to the right side now. Don't let anything else move as best you can. Forward into flexion. Last one here. Twist left, check that hip. Bend left, should be at 30 to 40% here. Push the knees into the ground, rotate to the right. Far as you can, forward. Maintain that tension and reverse. Twist right, now we're watching that right hip. Bend right, extend back. Bending to the left as far as I can. Back into flexion. A Little more on that tension now. 45, 50% if you feel good. Extend, 
push those knees into the ground, bend left, increase the size of that circle with each rotation. Last one, make this your best, twist right, bend right, extend, bend left, and flex. Good. Now you're probably thinking, what in the good Lord's name was that? <laughs> yeah. So, for those of you who are new to mobility training, I think it's uh, important to note, and by the way, we're at lower MVC right now. Imagine when we move that to 60, 70, 80, 90% in some cases, or 100%. Um, this is training, physical training. But the morning routine, just to clarify the differences, morning routine is about what? Wake the joints up, get the tissues moving, evaluate what's going on with the body, how you feel. It's like having a first conversation of the day. You don't get up and just start smashing and hammering. Maybe some of you do, but you probably shouldn't. But you do get up and try to get a dialogue going. Try to explore what's happening with the body, how you feel if you've trained yesterday. Uh, how, how do I feel in recovery today? Did I go too hard? Am I, how, how's my body feeling? What's my progression look like? So that's how we wanna view the morning routine. So let's get going, I'm jabbering a bit too much. So next, we're gonna go ahead and step into scapula. So remember, scapula, or shoulder blades in the back, this is a pretty massive and fascinating bone. It's got a 17 different muscles connecting to it. Um, but it doesn't have a fixed point, meaning there's no ball socket to connect. So what we want to do is get those shoulder blades and we wanna get those things to move, slide and glide as smoothly as we can. And we're gonna work those in both directions, just like we are with any of the other joints. So in this case, what I'm gonna have you do, <clears throat> easiest, is I'm gonna have you go hands to the side. You don't need to do it yet, I'm just gonna show you. I'm gonna put hands to the side and I want you to keep those fists or fingers tracking on the pant seam. So my shoulders are gonna move back and forward, up and down but I don't want my hands to slide back and forward, and I also don't want the hands to circle. So a common problem with this one is as we come forward, my hands start to turn in, but this is internal rotation, right? And I don't wanna internally rotate the shoulder, I'm working on the scapula. So I'm not trying to get shoulder involvement, I'm trying to keep that fixed. So I'm gonna ask you once again to have your have your hands straight down at your side or fists at your side. What I'm gonna ask you to do is depress the shoulders, drive those shoulders forward, which is gonna glide the scapula out. I'm gonna ask you to elevate that as high as you can, pulling that shoulder point up so this is not a trap exercise. Pull that shoulder up as high as possible, push that shoulder back, and then I'm gonna ask you to depress that shoulder down as far as you can, and then once again forward, and we're gonna reverse that pattern. All right, so here we go. Hands will be at the sides. Keep those in touch with that pant seam. Brace your frame slightly, so pack the air down into the abdomen. We're starting the first round at 10 to 20%. Squeeze the glutes, 10 to 20. Squeeze the abdomen, squeeze the fist. Allow that tension to irradiate up the arm. Nice and tall through the body line. The only thing that moves is the scapula and the shoulder. So depress down, protract forward, drive the shoulder point forward, elevate up 10 to 20%, retract back, depress down. Forward, up, retract, depress. One more. Little more tension here, forward. Give me 20 to 30%, elevate. Retract back, far as you can. Squeeze those blades together, depress. Reverse. Maintain that tension, retract back. Elevate, high as you can. Protract forward, depress down. 30 to 40% now, retract. Elevate, protract, descend. Back, last one, elevate, protract, and descend. Nice, everybody feel that? Sun coming in and out, hopefully you can see me. Yeah, that's not you getting into a fuzzy white haze. <laughs> that's probably the clouds breaking. Okay, so we did scapula, we're gonna go ahead and switch to elbow. So elbows, remember, um, the joint that we're working on for elbow is we're having these two bones that are gonna rotate relative to the humerus. So for this one, we want these two bones 
to twist. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have you extend all the way open as best you can. I'm gonna cue you on tension. I want your hands to be straight like blades. No cupping, no overextending, just nice vertical blades. When I get to that full extension, I'm gonna have you show me your palms. I'm gonna draw you all the way into full flexion, which is like a bicep curl for those of you who have done it before. Then I'm gonna ask you to pronate those hands over and try to lift the pinky as far as I can toward the face mechanically. Then I'm gonna have you depress down. Now remember, to create tension through this, which will probably feel normal for you, there are um, protagonist and antagonistic muscles. So in this case, I'm creating my own internal resistance, similar to what I did with the hands. So I'm gonna lift through some dense air and then in a way push down, like I've got cloudy, dense air that I'm driving my hands through. Okay, so here we go. Nice and tall through the body. Supinate those palms over and show me the palms as best you can. Nice and tall. Pack that air down into the abdomen, squeeze the glutes and slowly 10 to 20% coming up through the air. Squeeze all the way into full flexion, pronate those hands over, slowly pushing down through that dense air. Supinate back over, give me 20 to 30%. A little more dense now as we come up. Squeeze, pronate over, back down. Now give me 30, 40%. Supinate, back up, all the way into full flexion, rotate, and back down, don't release that tension. Hold that tension and reverse. Arms come straight up, over, and straight down. All the way into full extension. Over, pronate down, up. Palms towards the face, try to touch that pinky towards the face, and down. Let's do one more. Over, pinkies towards the ceiling. Sky in this case, over, and down. Good, nice job. Okay, so next we're gonna go into shoulder. I wanna make sure we can get through. Sometimes I talk a little bit too much, trying to give too much data, and I wanna give you guys, uh, keep you on track for the time. So shoulders, we're gonna do a couple interesting things. Shoulder joint, what we're trying to do, the glenerohumeral joint in the shoulder moves in a linear plane, but we also have axial rotation. And I'm gonna move in a global plane here. So I want internal rotation, and then I want to reach as far back as I can without allowing that shoulder to trail. So what we're gonna do here is I'm gonna draw across the center line of the body, which I'll show you in a second. I'm gonna keep these rib tips down nice and tight, go as high as I can vertically without this. So if you find you get to the end range for the shoulder and the shoulder won't go any further, I don't want you to start using the spine to go higher. So one thing you can monitor here is you think about, uh, you find the bottom rib and you think about the ASIS, which is that hip bone forward. So if I can contact those two bones, and sometimes this can be an easier way to do it, if I reach across the body, if you feel yourself hinging, okay, and we'll probably do it on the second one, I'll touch that rib tip with my thumb and I'll touch that hip point with my fingers. That way, when I contract my abdomen and I hold that tissue straight, if I get to here and I keep that squeeze and I feel those hands stretching apart, that tells me I'm starting to move the pel pelvis relative to the ribs or ribs relative to the pelvis by bending the spine to get involved with the movement. But remember, this is not spine training, this is shoulder training. So this is a great point and the shoulder has a massive range of motion. Shoulder joint and hip joints are super awesome, right? Ball and socket joints have incredible, they're supposed to have incredible ranges of motion. So what we wanna to try to do as best we can is to utilize or explore as much of that range as we can to excavate any ranges that may have been lost or certainly teach the neuromuscular system how to move more effectively and safely within a larger or ever expanding area of range. So 
Don't be surprised if it's junky. If it doesn't move quite the way you'd like to, that's okay, don't worry about that. Just do the best that you can, okay? So I want you to monitor these two points, the ribs and the hip point, and then just be mindful. If you find you get to what feels like a sticking point and you start reaching with the body, try to pay attention to what the body's doing. It's a great, great tool for you. So the front here, I'm also, just to be clear, there's a center line. I'm gonna ask you to try to squeeze your pec or your chest and come across that center line as far as you can without turning the body. So shoulders are square, body is vertical, and I'm gonna keep this elbow straight, come across the center line of the body, keep these two points connected, and I'm gonna move vertically as high as I can without opening these points. Once I get to that peak position, I'm gonna rotate that palm to face away from me, towards the wall or window where you're at. From there, without letting this shoulder follow, I'm gonna to begin to immediately rotate the bicep. So I want you to imagine there's a big black X on the bicep and I'm gonna to start to turn that bicep towards the wall behind me and the floor behind me. So I come across the center all the way vertical, rotate the palm, which takes the palm out of the exchange. Now I focus on the bicep and the humerus and I immediately begin to twist. Twist and rotate, keeping as close to that wall and floor behind me as I can. When I come down parallel, notice my hands are gonna be facing away from the body still. When I reverse, I'm gonna go straight back, not back and out. Okay, so this is important, especially for those of you, I think one of you is a mobility and FRC person. So when you get back to here, this for me is a really important evaluation. If your sensory awareness is not keen, you will push back into extension and then you'll continue pushing back, feeling like you're getting extension. But where is my hand relative to my hip? Out, which means I have now abducted. So abduction is a different portion of shoulder mechanics and not what we're looking for. In this case, I'm looking for pure extension. So try to be mindful, extend back until I hit what feels like a roadblock. Don't fight for more and force your arm out. That's not pure extension. So just a quick little side note for you. Okay, so let's give it a shot. Enough jibber jabber. Your um, reverse, your right hand. Um, what I think we'll do for all of you is bring that right hand behind the small of the back. So you've got a little kickstand off to the side. Then I want you to think about pushing your wrist into the small of the back. So you feel a little bit of tension in that forward shoulder. Start to put a nice 10, 20% into the lower abdomen, squeeze those glutes. Arm is nice and straight, supinate that palm out towards me. Ready, brace your frame. Slowly begin, cross center, all the way up into vertical as best you can. Keep those rib tips down. From here, rotate the palm out and immediately begin to twist like a dish rag that bicep as I go back, all the way to the side and reverse, straight back. Rotate the thumb and bicep towards the ceiling. Continue, cross that center, back down, maintain that tension, and again. Now we're going 20-30%. Vertical, high as you can, rotate that palm. Immediately begin twisting that bicep back towards the floor and wall and reverse till I hit that block. And then start to rotate the bicep and thumb towards the ceiling. Little bug checking me out. Down towards the center, last one. Make this your best one. Straight elbow, 30 to 40%. Vertical, nice and tall, keep those ribs fixed. Rotate the palm. Immediately begin rotating, bicep towards the floor and wall behind you. Maintain that body tension and reverse. Thumb and bicep towards the ceiling. Keep that pressure on that right arm and relax. Nice, we're gonna jump right into second side. So left arm is gonna go behind the small of the back, gentle pressure there. Right arm is gonna be straight down, push that left wrist into the small of the back, create a little counter tension into the shoulder. Rotate palm facing up, squeeze the butt, squeeze the abdomen. Once again, maybe 20% to start. Begin, keep those ribs down. Think about squeezing those together. Vertical, palm rotates out. Immediately begin reaching and rotating toward the floor and wall behind you. 
and reverse. Straight back. Rotate, bicep and thumb towards ceiling. Now imagine you're pushing through that dense air again, remember? So I wanna create resistance. Let's go 20, 30% here. Keep those rib tips down, rotating. Parallel and reverse. Straight back, thumb and bicep toward the ceiling. Crossing that center line through that dense air. Here we go, let's take it up to 30, 40%, as long as the road is clear. Nice and vertical. Palm rotates away from you. Turn that bicep, pressurize that left arm, and reverse. Thumb and bicep toward the ceiling. Maintain that path, and relax. Nice, upper body, finito. So now we're gonna go ahead and switch to hips. So hips are a little bit tricky. I'm gonna give you two, two visual planes for what we're gonna do, and then we're gonna dive in. Shoulders, we use a lot more range than we do in hips, which in my experience means you have a better association to what's going on in the shoulder. Hips, we think we're super good at, but we're not in general. So, um, what I would counsel you to think about with the hips is this. If it feels pretty good, it's probably wrong. Not wrong, meaning you're doing it wrong, meaning um, it's not as clean as you think it is. So slow down, don't go too fast. Speed is the enemy here because the faster we go, the less we feel. So what we want to try to do is as we're moving through these ranges, we want the communication signal back and forth. The brain says what's happening, the hip tries to tell it. The brain says, I don't understand what you're saying, the hip signals again. The more of this back and forth dialogue we get, the stronger the signal channel becomes and we wake up more tissues inside that capsule or whichever capsule we're working so that the map that the mind holds of what that joint looks like, how to activate it, how to articulate it, how to move it, how to, how to recruit the tissues that support and surround it, that map just gets clearer, stronger, and more vibrant. So part of us visiting this practice every single day is to constantly keep that map fresh, clean, and clear, okay? So coming back to my original point, don't fight for how big can I make it it feels super sexy, it's probably looking super sexy. Uh, this is training, right? Not competing. So push all that stuff aside, get out of your own ego and see what you can feel. Not what you think you can do, what you can feel. Because feeling is the map that we're trying to build. Okay, so here's where we're gonna go. We're gonna do quadruped position. Today, if we come back to this, I'll give you guys some different setups another time. So. I would like to have hands directly underneath shoulders and I'd like to have knees directly underneath hips. So I don't want the hands out in front of me and I don't want the hips the knees behind the hips. Now I want to be in nice four point pillar position. I'm going to try to keep my body from sulking. So I want to have a nice straight frame. I can also push my back up and create tension through the arms here as I need to. So what I'm gonna ask you to do from here is I'm gonna ask you to draw your knee up towards your chest or this elbow. When I ask you to draw this forward, I'm gonna then ask you to rotate it out, but you're gonna drag the foot. So I don't want you to come up and bring the whole leg out. I want you to come up, drag the toes as you come out towards the ceiling as high as I can and then freeze this point. Then I'm gonna ask you to internally rotate that hip. So I want you to turn this femur, <coughs> excuse me, inside as far as I can. Then I'm gonna elevate that hip and knee without lifting the pelvis. Go all the way in towards the center line, come down so the legs are parallel and then reverse. So I'm gonna kick back as high as I can without this thing, straight back into extension. From there, knee, shin, and ankle out to the side as high as I can. Once again, without spilling the pelvis. All the way up, externally rotate by dropping the foot. And then I'm gonna bring that knee back into center line. 
Does it sound like I'm winded? <laughs> Teaching and moving, two different things, right? So I'm gonna call you as best I can on cues without hyperventilating, and we're gonna go through first side. <coughs> Excuse me. So ready position, four corners underneath you, okay? Hands under the shoulders, knees under the hips. I want you to try to pack just a little bit of air down into your abdomen. So build a little tension there. Squeeze the fingers into the ground. Nice and tall, you can push some pressure up through the shoulders. Then slowly holding that tension, right knee or left knee, up towards that front elbow. Drag the foot and externally rotate. As high as you can without lifting the pelvis. Internally rotate. Maintain that elevation as you go back. Slowly draw down into parallel as if I have a resisting force here and kicking back. 10 to 20% here. Draw out, knee, shin, and ankle as high as I can, up towards elbow, in, down, and again. Repeat, 20 to 30% on this one. In towards center. Try to increase the size of the circle with each repetition. All the way up, drop that foot, knee towards the elbow. Last one, here we go, 30 to 40%. Out, don't lift that pelvis. Internally rotate, maintain that height. Down towards parallel and back. Externally rotate, all the way up, drop that foot towards the ground, knee in and down. First side, switch. Here we go, second side, ready. Try to readjust your frame once again. Pay close attention to those points or those pillars. Pressure through the shoulder. Pack that air down into the abdomen. Drive the pressure into the fingers and the hands. Brace and begin, left knee towards the center. Drag that foot out towards the side as high as I can without lifting the pelvis. Internally rotate. All the way towards center line and down. Reverse, kicking back into extension. Knee, shin, and ankle up. Don't allow that pelvis to lift. All the way in, drop that foot. Down towards center, and again. 20-30%. Back, knee, shin, and ankle. Drop that foot in towards center. Last rep, here we go. 30 to 40%. Internally rotate. In towards center. And reverse. Drop that foot in and down. Good job. Okay, so listen, it's 10.37, and I promised you 10.30. We have knees and ankles and toes. I'm going to stay and do them, but if you guys have to jet, I totally understand, and I, I thank you for hanging out and being with me. If you, um, if you have any questions or requests, um, you can go ahead and send them to me via DM. I'll uh, direct message, sorry, I'll put this in the story. I think I can do that. I'm trying to figure out the whole Instagram thing, but I think I can post it in the story and uh, you guys can rewatch it if you want to go back through again, or you can use it each morning if you'd like, which would be the best of all scenarios. If you'd like to stay and hang out, we're going to jump right into knees and ankles, which are uh, less demanding than the hips, but I just wanted to keep you guys clear on time so, so I didn't drag you. Okay, so let's go ahead and dive into knees. Thanks again for, for the last minute notice and jumping in. I hope you enjoyed it. So knees, what I want you to think about is, I call this the shark fin. So use your fingers, slide up and down or just below the kneecap, and I want you to find that knot. There's a knot there, a tibial tuberosity, that sticks out. Mine is pretty, pretty pronounced. So what I want to do is get my fingers on both sides of that, okay? Then I'm going to draw my foot all the way up into dorsiflexion. Then what I want you to do is turn the toe and feel that shark's fin turn against your fingers. Wash back over to the other side. Keep that dorsiflexion up. Back in. 
back out. Everybody feel that? Okay, now what I want you to think about is, I want you to create some inbound pressure on that shark fin. So what I'm gonna have you do is tune into how do I create resistance in the knee when I'm doing these exercises? All of this is isometric force, right? When I'm resisting this thing coming up, I'm doing that internally, which means I'm using those protagonists and antagonistic muscles in order to be able to create my own load, my own resistant force. But when you're talking about inside the knee structure, this is not something that most of us are accustomed to. So I want you to try to feel this. Both fingers up against the shark fin. When I'm here, I wanna give myself some inbound pressure. And now what I'm gonna ask you to do is I'm gonna ask you to push those fingers out of the way on both sides. Okay, so a little bit of inbound pressure. Pull those toes into dorsiflexion. Fingers on both sides of the fin there. Ready, and push internal. Good. Connect on that other side. Push those fingers away external as far as I can. Hold those fingers inside, push. Fingers outside and push. Good. This is exactly what I'm trying to rotate underneath the femur. So I want this bone to turn, not my foot to turn. The foot is gonna be turning, and that's what I'm gonna ask you to, to turn internal and external. But what we're turning is this bone. So we want that tibia to actually turn underneath the femur. That's the knee joint that we're working on. Okay, so I'm gonna have you start with right, uh, your left leg, left hand underneath left leg. Right hand, extend. Grab the right bicep, squeeze the right hand towards you. Grab the back of the knee, okay? Not the front, the back. So for this, once again, keep your mind on that blade, and I want you to imagine that your fingers are on each side resisting that blade from turning, okay? Hold that tension against the arm. If you find this is uncomfortable, this is fine, okay? I can kick back and still hold the leg. I'm working on the knee, but this is ideal because it really gives you a good sense of connection. So I'm gonna pull the foot into dorsiflexion as far as I can, ready. I'm gonna externally rotate, pinky toes towards the wall as far as you can, keeping that dorsiflexion, right? And then I'm gonna extend. Imagine my resistance against your shin. Now turn that shark fin in. Turn it out, far as you can. Turn it in and flex. Pull that leg all the way back and squeeze that arm. Externally rotate that fin, internally rotate. Extend, keep that dorsiflexion, externally rotate, feel that blade turn in, out, and flex. Once again, extend, keep reaching, internally rotate as far as you can and flex. Extend, externally rotate, and flex. Good, stay here, slide the hand forward. Now, I do not want that bone to move. Now I wanna focus just on the ankle. So I'm gonna put my hand here, so if I feel that bone move, that means now I'm using my tibia to turn the foot. I don't wanna do that. So I wanna keep this fixed, mine goes into the ankle. I want you to imagine me holding onto your foot and you trying to fight the resistance of my hand and draw the biggest circle you can with me holding that foot. Here we go, ready. Begin, left foot's going clockwise, or counterclockwise for you, I think. Try not to turn this bone. Big, slow circle. One more. And reverse. Don't move that bone. Bigger circle still. Good, switch legs. So now we're gonna go Right leg, right arm underneath. Left arm is gonna open straight out. Put my hand on that left bicep, close it. Drop the hand over the top. We should test this one first, sorry. Come back to blade, rotate that and feel the fingers on that shark fin, right? Pull that foot into dorsiflexion. 
and start to push those fingers away. Switch, push those fingers away. Switch, push, and push. We good? Right arm, right leg underneath, grab the left bicep and close. Left hand behind that right knee. Here we go, pull the foot into dorsiflexion. Externally rotate as far as you can, move that blade out and extend. Internally rotate, push those fingers away. Externally rotate. Internally rotate, push those fingers, move that blade as far as you can and flex. Externally rotate. Internal. External. Farther, farther, farther. Internal. And extend. External, here by the way, for those of you who are super bendy, don't extend fully. If I extend fully, I lock out the knee and I can no longer rotate the tibia. So externally rotate, flex, keep that external rotation as far as I can extend. <sighs> Internally rotate, you probably heard that pop. Flex, stuff moving around, that's okay. Extend, externally rotate and flex. Good, hand slides forward. Now monitor that tibial bone. Let's go for counterclockwise rotation. Nice and slow and controlled and reverse. Biggest circles I can. You hear the racetrack behind me? These are all the people that are staying at home. <laughs> Crazy down here in Southern California. Okay, excellent job. We have one more thing to do, which is gonna be toes. So we're gonna do toe cars. I hope you can see me. I'm gonna to come to the edge here. So ideally, we wanna to try to do this on a flat surface as best you can, like a hard floor. If you do it on the carpet, it's gonna be hard for you to feel the feet. And feeling, of course, is an important point. So I wanna relax my feet and toes about shoulders width apart. From here, ready? I'm gonna lift the great toe only as high as I can. Lift, 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 lift. Hold that position and relax down. Second round up, lift that great toe. Try not to push the other four down. Lift and hold, lift and hold, back down. Again up, back down. And again, up, hold, 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 higher, 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 back down. Good, keep that big toe down, outer four toes up. Reach, try not to evert the foot, so try to keep the foot flat as best you can, back down. Big toe stays down, outer four up. Reach and lift, 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 back down. Big toe down, outer four up. Stretch, stretch, stretch towards the ceiling, a little bit higher, a little bit higher, back down. Big toe down, outer four up, 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 up. Try to keep that pinky base on the ground and back down. Good, all five toes up, lift, lift, lift. Big toe only touch, back up. 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 Good, now lastly, I'm gonna ask you to abduct. So I want you to spread those toes as far as you can. Duck feet web, slowly touch down that first pinky reach. Second digit, third digit, fourth digit, fifth. All five up, abduct out, spread further, further, further. Slowly one digit at a time. Cascade down, all five up, abduct out. Stretch and reach, stretch and reach. Really try to sense one toe at a time touching down. All five up. Stretch and reach, out, 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 slowly down. Boom. That, my friends, is car's routine, morning routine, plus one or two. <laughs> so just to reiterate, we're at almost 11 o'clock now, so I was ramping your tension just a bit. In general, when you do the morning routine, very first thing, if you're making a cup of tea or a cup of coffee, it's a great start place to start in the morning. I would do maybe 10 to 20% MVC. So 10 to 20% tension, explore. That's just exploration, see how the body is feeling. If you're feeling pretty good, 
and you're already athletic and you feel like you have good mobility and good motor control, I would use the first one to explore, second one slightly higher, third one slightly higher still, which is what I showed you today. Um, but start slow, especially if you're new to this practice, it's much more important that you can feel what's going on and you can control the different elements of your body rather than trying to ramp tension to, to get a, a strong workout per se, because it's not a workout, it's really a morning routine or a warm up to build that proprioceptive, proprioceptive awareness of what's going on in my body, the mechanical control, etc. So if you're in a kin stretch class, like one of our kin stretch class or, or someone else that you might work with, um, or if you're doing uh, individual mobility training with an FRC uh, specialist, uh, you'll find that you're gonna get instruction to use this routine as a warm up to physically warm up the joints, the tissues and the neuromuscular coordination before we start to create uh, more pronounced movement, more specific movement skill. So it's a great practice to use. I use it to teach my, my Gong Fu students when we get ready to start. Um, of course, I teach it in, in the kin stretch classes uh, I hold as well, but it's a great tool for you to keep your joints healthy. Thanks so much for joining me this morning. Uh, like I said, if you have questions, feel free to, to DM me. I'm, I'm always happy to try to reply as best I can. If you've got uh, questions, suggestions, or otherwise, I know we ran over. I'm sorry, but I did give you the break and uh, I hope you enjoyed it. So thanks for popping in at the last minute and joining me. Have a good day, stay safe.